Today I wanna to share with you a video of a surgery that we performed just a few days ago to repair a completely detached, free-floating graft scrolled in the anterior chamber of an eye. And at the end of the video, I wanna give you surgeons out there some key learning points. So if you find yourself in a similar circumstance, you'll know what to do. I'm Jack Parker. I'm one of the cornea surgeons here at Parker Cornea. We're the how to do DMAC people. Let's get into this video together. So here's the patient on the operating room table just a few days ago. And the circumstances are, this is a repeat surgery for a combined phaco DMEC performed one week before for cataract and Fuchs dystrophy. And the operation went fine. There were no problems, but in the immediate post-operative period, the graft totally detached and is now free floating in the anterior chamber as a double roll. So here we're taking the patient back to surgery and the idea is to try to refixate this good existing transplant to the back of the eye. Just with some blunt feeling around with a cannula, I was able to locate my old paracentesis and I'm searching around for the main wound so maybe I won't have to make a new one with this cannula. But despite all of my efforts here temporarily, I'm unable to find the old incision. So I play with it for a little while and once I realize it's going to be more difficult to find than I anticipated, we just move on. And the strategy here is gonna to be to stain the tissue in the eye with Tripan Blue. And in general, I think staining tissue inside of the eye is a bad idea. It shouldn't be done most times. And the reason is, is that the stain stains everything. It stains the tissue, but it also stains the back of the cornea and the iris and the epithelium. Everything gets stained. So if you're interested in improving your contrast, staining everything blue is usually not a good idea. However, the reason that I thought to try that in this case was I was too worried about potentially taking the graft outside of the eye to stain it. That's usually the best idea, but there's no stain on this tissue whatsoever. And I'm worried that if I try to extract it from the eye, I'll tear it or I'll lose it. The graft will just be washed into the fornix with a jet of saline and I'll never see it again. And so I was so afraid of losing my ability to find this tissue, I thought the safer thing to do was to stain it inside of the eye. The graft here is poorly seen, but it's curled as a double roll floating on top of the irostroma. So I've got this short little stubby cannula and I'm using that just to spray Tripan Blue generally over in that vicinity. And my thought is, well, I really wanna make sure that if I'm gonna stain the graft inside of the eye, I get some bang for that buck. I wanna stain it deeply because if I'm gonna play this card and burn this opportunity, I wanna make sure I'm actually able to see the graft. So rather than stain everything weekly, I think, okay, well, I'm really gonna stain the graft deeply. So I inject a lot of Tripan Blue, I'm filling up the anterior chamber, and I'm sitting, and I'm waiting, and I'm trying to be patient. And interestingly, of course, you'll know that I'm also getting some stain of my side port incisions. And I'm a little bit hopeful in the back of my mind that maybe the main wound will also become stained and I'll be able to find it. But really what I'm hopeful here is that the graft will be stained. And now I'm injecting more Tripan Blue because I wanna make sure that I get some payoff for this decision, this commitment. So here we go. This is more Tripan Blue inside the eye. And you'll notice there's an air bubble, but I really can't see the graft. You know, I, I'm just hopeful that it's being well stained. And now it's time to see what we've achieved. So I'm gonna withdraw this bubble and I'm gonna deepen the chamber of saline, wash out some of that excess Tripan Blue. And here we can at least see the graft now. The graft is visible in contrast to the irostroma in the back of the cornea. But the whole cornea is stained blue. So the situation is better, but it's actually still a problem. And you'll also notice superiorly, you can see an unstripped little remnant from the past operation. 
Even if you're really careful, sometimes you leave remnants behind in the tripan blue, it stains everything, it highlights them. So that remnant is sort of flapping around, the graft is rotating in the eye, and now I have to decide what to do here. Okay, so what's the plan? Well, one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a main wound. I'm gonna use a keratome to make a new primary incision. And the reason for that is that a large wound is so useful when doing graft unfolding. I couldn't find my old one, and rather than make do with the paracentesis that I had, this is a difficult eye, so I want to have access to a main wound. So now I have a good temporal access point. I know where it is. And what is the plan now? Well, really, what I'm trying to do is figure out how the graft is curled in the anterior chamber. And it is the same color as everything else in the eye, the back of the cornea. So the way that I'm trying to assess it is with motion. I'm injecting fluid in the eye, and I'm getting the graft to tumble around. And, and the reason is, is when the graft is flipping and floating, you can catch sight of the edges of the tissue. Um, it, it's kind of like from the movie Jurassic Park, you know, the T-Rex hunts with motion. So what I'm looking for is I'm trying to get the graft to move so I can see the edges of it. I can see what I'm doing. So I'm injecting fluid as I depress the wound. And as I depress the wound and inject fluid, I get motion. And there it seems like the graft is right side up. So I take advantage of that opportunity, okay? I saw an edge of the graft curling towards me. So I use the cannula to check the Motsuro sign, which is positive, and then I poke the graft over. That's called the help yourself technique. So here we know definitively that the graft is right side up. Then I shallow the anterior chamber by burping the main wound, and then apply Dirazomer taps to the corneal surface. And again, I can see the leading edge of the graft when it's moving. When it's moving, I can see where it is. And so I'm trying to pay attention to what is changing in the eye with motion. And it's so difficult to see. One thing that would have helped me at this point see is to use a light pipe. You know, Indo Illuminator Assisted DMEC and PDEC has been described by Susan Jacob. A light pipe would have been immensely useful in this circumstance, but I can still see sort of faintly the edges of the graft. And I'm shallowing the chamber and applying these Dirazomer taps to the surface of the cornea to get the graft to open up. And there we go, the graft is completely unfolded atop the iris, but it's so poorly visualized, so difficult to see but it does finally seem like it's totally unfolded and we'll lift it up to the back surface of the cornea atop this air bubble. And this is the end of the operation. So this was a learning point operation for me. You know, this is not a surgery that we had done before. Normally when you have a graft that is totally detached in the immediate post-operative period after DMEC, it's because the graft was implanted upside down or there's something wrong with the tissue. But in this case, the graft was applied right side up to the back of the cornea. It seemed like good, healthy cells. So we had this unusual circumstance of a healthy graft floating around inside of the eye that we couldn't see, and we had to decide what to do. Do we just take it out and replace it with a new tissue, or could we use this old tissue again? The way that we decided to go about it was staining the graft inside of the eye. And I think that it worked, but it made the surgery much more challenging than it probably could have been. It made graft unfolding much harder than the original surgery was because our contrast was so poor. If I had to do this operation again, what I would have done was stay in the graft very faintly by cannulating it with a long cannula. I would have gone into the lumen of the graft it injected just enough stain to faintly discern the edges, and then I would have made a new wound, removed the graft from the eye, stained it deeply, and then put it back in the anterior chamber. That would have made it so much easier to see what we were doing and have much greater confidence in unfolding this tissue Whereas what we did do, we kind of got lucky that it worked because everything was stained blue and it was so difficult to see what we were doing. So I would say that's the key learning point from this case is try not 
ever to stain a graft inside of the eye. Certainly if you're doing a primary DMEX surgery and the stain starts to fade and you think, oh, I'm losing my view, remove the graft from the eye and stain it in a cup or a bowl outside of the eye so you don't stain the stroma and poison your ability to see things for the rest of the case. And if you have these sort of vague ideas of where the graft edges are, use an endo illuminator. That's Susan Jacobs' trick to see the edges better. Hopefully these videos are making it a little bit easier for you to perform these complicated cases on your own. If you have complicated cases that you want to submit to the channel, send them to me. We'll review them, we'll critique them, we'll talk about them. As always, thanks so much for watching.